Heavenly Gifts Jesus Elucidates The True Communion April 25th, 1847 Question of Anne's H.W. O Lord, you good, dear, and holy Father, are, according to you, only the priests of the Christian denominations entitled to administer your flesh and blood in the form of bread and wine? Or would a meek layman who humbly loves you be entitled to do this as well? And even more so when he, enlightened by you, realizes that in the church in which he was raised, idolatry is being revered, and that the clergy of this church spreads darkness instead of light, and is more focused that their statues are regarded by the people than your holy word? The Lord says, In the scripture it only says, Do this in remembrance of me, but who should be doing that specifically is not mentioned. The scripture shows clearly that anyone who is reborn, i.e. baptized in water and by the Holy Spirit in my name, can do this. The scripture advises everyone to do so, not only some individuals. Would it not be so, the layman would not be allowed to pray the Our Father or do anything else that the Gospel commanded to do. For only the apostles and disciples have received the teaching and commandments from me, but I never said to the apostles, only you do this, but the believers may, under the strictest deadly sin, not do it. Instead, everywhere it says this, do this, and that applies to everyone, whether messenger or disciple. For one is the master and lord of you all, but you are all brothers. You will be recognized by your love if you truly are my disciples. That is what is written in the scriptures. Whoever should do this thing in order to attain eternal life, he should also do the other thing. For whoever does not completely fulfill the word that I have taught is like a fruit which could not reach its full ripeness for lack of any strong sunlight. Just like every good Christian is able to baptize when a person is ready for the baptism of the Spirit, so it is an even greater duty for every proper and true evangelical Christian, these are Christians that live according to the gospel, to administer to the brothers and sisters a proper meal of love, consisting of bread and wine, and doing so in remembrance of me, whereby only needs to be mentioned that the swines shall not partake in this, who do not believe in me but instead only slander and despise me. But I am telling you, truly, truly, as often as you who love me eat and remember me while doing so, and especially as often as you feed and provide a drink for your poor brothers in my name, as often you ingest the proper meal of love and hand it out dignified as well. What you do for the poor, you have done unto me. Do you want to do something even greater and more holy? I, the Lord, know no greater and holier deed than that. This is the true meaning of, this is my body, hoc est enim corpus meum, that you do true deeds of love, because a true deed of love in my name is my actual, most truthful body, which is given for many, yes, for each and every one, and not only for the apostles and priests, to the true attainment of eternal life. In the same way it behaves with the chalice, which is my blood, meaning my word, which is supposed to be poured out on all peoples, just like the blood flows into all limbs of the body, in its original purity and genuineness, but not as an impure, adulterated wine. Therefore, wherever my name is truly made known in the heart during a meal of love, there the chalice is also enjoyed in spirit and in truth. Does any one of you still want more? What will probably be even better, love or communion wafer, or so-called consecrated wine? I tell you, where I am not in the love of the people and in my word, there bread and wine is worth nothing. But where I am in the love and in the word, there I am also as a continual eternal communion in the heart, soul and spirit of every human being without any priestly consecration. Amen. Amen. Amen.